Hello everybody, this is Rochelle Rosenberg. Welcome to this Art and Faith channel. Today I'm gonna share you some important things regarding your acrylic paint. If you are new in uh, painting, it is best for you to consider the paintings that you are using and how to dispose them properly for example these kinds of uh, cloth or rugs that you are using papers that has acrylic rests has some traces of solvent and paintings it's very important as an artist or as a painter to be observant about the toxic toxicity of the painting that you are using actually so a painting acrylic is one of the best activity that you can do painting and with, with acrylic and oil but you have to be aware on how to handle these kinds of chemicals so acrylic is a water-based uh, solvent it's a combination of uh, color pigment plus acrylic polymer emulsion so it is um, a plastic substance or a water soluble based similar to is latex and latex when it is dried is uh, non-breathable so imagine this kind of painting when i paint the surface of this of this cloth it is very closed all right then it cannot breathe and so you can see it right through that there's no space of holes because it covers almost the whole most of the people say that acrylic actually is not is non-toxic sometimes it's not necessarily true all right so we know that this is mixed with chemicals still and we have to treat it properly so one example i can tell you is health hazard warning says non-toxic all right so paint contains hazardous heavy metal like cadmium and cobalt or chromium and most of the packaging have the symbols on the jar and i do not actually have my uh, my jar here i have a solvent but i i have it outside okay because it's a strong smell and it's very dangerous most of these pigments can actually cause cancer and uh, on the skin and most of the solvent that has a strong smell can actually also cause some other troubles in the uh, in our systems all right so cadmium red like this one this is cadmium and i have it on some lessons art lessons physical lessons this is forbidden to use truly harmful to aquatic life and has long lasting effects so it's very important that that when we are disposing these kinds of rests for example you have it on your palette you have to throw it properly in a garbage uh, house that has some uh, chemical or hazardous uh, symbols on it there it should be placed all right and here in uh, sweden mostly when i throw my stuff away that has some acrylic stuff i always put a symbol that it is an acrylic paint all right so it's very important so that's uh, the tip that i can give you and now maybe i'll gonna show you most of the paintings that i use and this one are the favorites oh my god <laughs> these are the paintings that i usually use i have this uh, uh, le franken bourgeois this is uh, a primary yellow that's very soft on its uh, color pigment and by the way even if we say that it's non-toxicity sometimes i have to wear gloves but not necessarily i just have to wash my hands wash your hands with warm soap or you can scrub yourself before painting with oil or otherwise don't do nothing just have some gloves 
all right so the color it looks like this it's very clear it's a clear yellow so i could do a lot of things in that and that's how i treat some of my paintings with a lot of uh, lights for example if i want an illusion of light and then i have this uh, carbon block this carbon block is one of my favorite but i rarely use it it's not often that i use it i create my own block color sometimes one of the things that i use in color black mixing is the burnt amber and then the blue when you mix them together they will create a little bit of grayish depending on how much of the paint you mix together if you have a lot of the burnt amber and a little bit of blue you could actually see the combination of the colors and then i have this white this is the titanium white right for the skin options i usually use this one um magenta this one i use the magenta and then i use the naples yellow these are already mixed colors you can actually do mix by yourself but since i want a ready-made color so i use this one and then i have some couple of handy uh, brushes here all right these are the long brushes that i use and most of them are are hair from the animals and then some of them are actually synthetic like this one um, actually this one I just did it by myself I just cut it just to create um, an illusion of grass for example whenever I paint like that right and then I have something else here as well and this is how I treat my brushes before I start I usually put them in wet water and then I make them wet so that it's easier for me to apply on my canvas right and I have my cloth this cloth is filled with acrylic paint so when it's too full for me I have to throw this away this is a fiber cloth so I have to throw it in um, special garbage according to the descriptions that I spoke while ago because this is hazardous to the environment it's not good for the birds to to pick this up or even to other kinds of animals that are roaming in our environment especially if you live nearby the the forest right so that's the tips that i can give you and i hope that it helped you a lot so if you're a new painter please look after the the descriptions of your painting or the colors that you have uh, uh, bought actually most of them has the symbols is there's a recycled uh, symbol over here and then there's a little bit of description about what it's all about and since this is a liquitex you can actually find different kinds of pdf files on their websites on how you will treat the the products or depending on what kind of mark or brand you are using so i'm using mostly windsor and Le Franc and Bourgois and then those are the main uh, products that I use especially when I'm going to sell the painting and some other acrylic liquitex I use just for uh, some practice and so on right so another tips also that I could share you is if you have an old lunch box you can actually use them don't throw them away you can actually use them in keeping your painting so this is how i do it i have here a wet paper this is just a tissue paper it looks like this this is a 
tissue paper and then I have a water in this um, in this lunch box I wet it with a little bit of water and then I have some pre-cut baking paper so these are the baking papers that I use I cut them in four so actually they are huge you know so I just cut them so they would fit this lunch box you can actually find a larger lunch box if you want if you want to mix the color in there but for me to keep the painting um, to keep the painting wet and that I still could use it overnight or at least at, until tomorrow or within three days I usually keep it here okay so how I handle it is in this manner so I put it here as you can see right and then here I can actually put the paintings or the acrylic paintings that I want to put I can divide the white the black and the red the yellow in here and then I usually have another plate to mix it into I have this one or I mostly use the cover as well to mix it I use the top to mix it because it's easier for me to clean so I have another uh, paper here mostly I do like that to paint or otherwise I just do it as I wish I mix it here inside everything all right so I'm gonna give you a sample so since I will gonna paint since I'm go going to paint this, I'm going to paint over it. I will have to use a little bit of magenta. Alright, so that's how I'm going to do that. And then a little bit of blue, of the primary blue. So the, the texture or the, the, the techniques that I do when I'm painting is that I put all the dark colors together on one side. Let me see. This is almost done. Okay. Alright, just a little bit of that. And then the light colors I will put on the other side. Right? Perfect. And I don't know where is my green, but I'm gonna make my green later. It's just a mix of blue and yellow. <clears throat> okay. So this is how I do it. I mix it here together and then I paint. And then I still can use that tomorrow or within three days if I'd like to by covering it. All right. By covering it like this, it makes the moist still there. Okay. This preserves the painting a little bit without, without wasting your money. And throwing it away right another tips that I can give you is to have a prepared um, this is for this is actually used for the refrigerator and this is a see this is transparent so that I could see whenever I am going to mix the colors right the techniques of this is that I can see whenever I'm going to paint I usually use this to to find the values the values are the light to sh uh, the shadow to darkness of the light to darkness in a painting all right and then um, I usually use this in oil because in oil I can actually just uh, clean this easily with um, with a paper it's easy to clean but when it comes to acrylic I use an I use the 
the lunchbox because I need the paper. I still can do it the same there, but there that's but that one doesn't have any cover. So I use this one so I could preserve the painting if I'm not yet done with the painting, right? So that's it now. I hope that it helps you. So thank you so much for watching and if you are new here and you enjoyed it and you want to watch more, please like and subscribe. Your contribution into this channel by watching helps me a lot. So God bless you.